Hi everyone, this is Jay and I will be teaching you on how to use Server Load Balancer to realize high availability. So uh, for the experiment overview, so Server Load Balancer is a service that distributes traffic among multiple ECS instances or Elastic Compute Server and it can scale up the service capability of an application system by distributing traffic and enhance availability by eliminating single point of failures. So this experiment covers the following key points. So number one, it's structure and principle of server load balancer and start Apache server on ACS instances and also configure a server load balancer instance and lastly, delete a server load balancer instance. So the experiment consists of the following steps. So one will be a prepared to ECS instances and a server load balancer instance. Next will be deploying the Apache server on the two ECS instances respectively and configure two ECS instances for the server load balancer instance. And for the cloud resources, an Alibaba cloud server load balancer instance and we will be using two Alibaba Cloud ECS instances using Ubuntu environment version 16.04 and an Apache server. Prerequisites, the system has automatically assigned a username and password for logging on to the Alibaba Cloud console. The system automatically creates an ECS instance with an Ubuntu environment and also the, the system automatically creates a backup the object server or the object's storage server container. Hint, when you enter the ECS console, the default region area may be different because of the different network addresses of your logon location. So if you find that the resource automatically created in the document does not exist at the console interface, please manually switch to the United States Silicon Valley region you will find them there. And if you encounter some differences between the real experimental environment and the captured pictures in the lab manual, it may be caused by the cloud portal version difference, which does not have a great impact on your experimental experience. You can click comment to give us feedback and we will update the document in time. Thank you for your cooperation. So the default DCS account, by the default, the required DCS instances is created in the experiment environment. And if you want to remotely log on to and manage ECS instances, use the following a username and password. So default username and password of the ECS instances will be root for the username. And for the password, it will be small n, small letter k, capital Y, H, G, number 890 and a double depth. So what is server load balancer? The server load balancer is a service supporting multiple ECS instances or elastic compute server and must be used together with ECS. And in this document, two ECS instances are created to carry the traffic forwarded by listeners of the server load balancer. Server load balancer sets a virtual IP address to virtualize multiple ECS instances in the same region into an application pool featuring high performance and high availability based on the method specified by the application. And the server load balancer distributes network requests from the client to the ECS pool. And server load balancer is a service supporting multiple ECS instances and must be used together with ECS components. So server load balancer consists of the server load balancer instance, listeners, and the backend servers. After the server load balancer instance receive requests from the clients, the listener dispute the request to the backend ECS instances according to the configured listening rules. As shown in the following uh, figure, you will see our server load balancer has two listeners inside and the listeners are forwarded all of the requests to each um, ECS or we have three ECS in this uh, following figure as shown. All right. 
So various instances. So after the experiment environment is started, the system automatically is great three required instances, including two ECS instances and one server load balancer instance. So we will be using the username and password allocated by the system to log on to Alibaba Cloud Console and go to the ECS management page, the server load balancer management page. All right. So let's now begin. So we'll be using this username and password and open the console and ignite the window. So place it here and get the uh, password. Paste it here, then log on. Log in the lab environment of the Alibaba Cloud. We will be using rather the Labex dash J A F U A, and the password will be the provided password by the system or by the lab. Put in the username. And you can also click this uh, letters that is highlighted in red uh, for it to be copy and paste it here and click log on. All right, there you go. So we're right now in ECS console. So as you can see, I just click the uh, Elastic Compute Server for us to get inside of the ECS console. So view the ECS instances information and you will notice that there are two running ECS instances. This one and this one. And click running to to view the instances list. So running to. And as you can see, you will notice the uh, instance list, the instance ID, name, and the monitor zone, IP addresses, status, network type, configuration, building method. All right. And we will need to go to manage to go to the instance details page and view more information. So hit manage and there you go. This information will be helpful to you as well. All right. Since I don't have an SSH tool putty in my environment, so I will be needing to Use the default remote connectivity provided by ECS, which you can find here in the basic information. So all you have to do is just to hit connect. I'll for you to go to the management terminal. And after clicking connect tab, you will be routed here in this management terminal. And since we don't have yet set up the, the VPC password, so we do need to modify the VPC password. So just hit cancel first and click modify VNC password. Put in the password that you desire. So uh, for me, I'll be using one, two, three, four, five, six. And just um, confirm the new password that you put in. And hit OK. So you can, as you can notice, there will be a pop-up that the password has already been modified. So in this case, uh, in the case earlier, there is no VNC connection password. So you should click cancel. Then you can be able to reset the password 
by clicking the modify management terminal this one and you can set the new vnc connection password and uh, the one that we did earlier that you will see this kind of pop up and you you can be able to put in your desired password on this tab and you just need to reconfirm it and you will need to hit OK. And after um, hitting OK, you do need to hit send remote command and click connect to the management terminal. So enter your password that you just created. Mine, what, what I created is one, two, three, four, five, six. And hit OK. See, there you go. You're already in the, inside the system. So this one is asking for you to put in the username, which will be root R O O. See, after typing that in, just hit Enter. And the password will be this one here. Then Enter. It will be small letter N, small letter K, and capital YHG, and the number 890, dot, dot, and hit enter. So we do need to relog in again because I just put in wrong password. So for the username, it will be root, hit enter. Password will be small letter N, small letter K, capital Y, capital H, capital G, number 8, number 9, 0, double dot. There you go. So once you see this page, all you have to do is to uh, put in the given instruction provided by the system. So if you are using Linux or Mac OS, you can open the client application on your local computer and run the following command to log on on the ECS instance with the default account. So you can be able to use the SSH root at elastic IP address of the instance. So the default username and password that we just use for the ECS instance, username will be root and the password is small letter N, small letter K, capital Y, capital H, and capital letter G, and number 890, dot, dot. And use the elastic IP address of the ECS instance to which you want to log on. And when prompted to enter the password, the default will not display the input. Only need to enter the, a complete password on it. And if you need to see the detailed login method, you can op open the login link for the further viewing, which will be this one. So if you hit this, you will see the username and password. And also the um, instruction that you do need to put in for the next step. So in this case, after successfully logging on to the ECS instance, we, we can deploy the Apache server by installing the Apache software and start the service. So we do need to run the following commands to start installation. And notice the space between the commands. So here, it's asking for us to put in the apt dash gate get space update on the uh, ECS console or instance. So you can copy that and you can be able to sit here. Or if you cannot be able to paste it, there's actually another way. You can hit input commands 
and paste what you copy. Okay, and let it go automatically, you know, type here in this black screen system. And you just need to hit OK. And now it's loading. There you go. So it's already been completed. And after that, we do need to put in this one the apt-get space install space apache2 space dash y so again you can also use this input commands by hitting the tab and paste the one that you copy on the instruction and hit ok then enter wait until it's load wait until it loads Mm -hmm. There you go. So after that, so after the installation is completed, run the following command to view the Apache running status by pressing the Q letter to exit. So for us to view if it's already running, we do need to put in these keywords. So service Apache 2 space status. Let's go here. And we can just put in what we did copy in the input commands and hit OK. As you can see, it's already here. Then hit enter. All right, so as you can see, uh, the preceding figure shows that Apache server is already in running state, which is this. So the two ECS instances are used in the experiment and each is deployed with the Apache server to know which ECS instance the traffic came from and the static web page of the Apache server on the two ECS instances must be differentiated. So run the following command on one of the ECS instances. So notice the space between the commands. So this keyword that has a low word, we need also to put this one, the ECS instance. If you click Q first to exit, and put in the keywords in input commands and hit OK. Then hit enter. So you can see this is this is going to be for ECS dash one. And since uh, we do need also to do this uh, step on the ECS two, so that once we put in the IP address on a new tab. We will also you seeing the ECS1 and ECS2 that is completed that has a hello word words. All right. So let's go back. All right, there you go. Let's go back to the ECS instance. And for you to see the IP address, go back here, last to compute service console. Click the running to tab. Here you go. This is our the uh, IP address that you can copy. Just to make sure that what we did is already been completed. 
and paste it here in the new tab. There you go. Hello world. This is ECS1. And we just need to do the same thing on the second ECS. So you do need to hit manage again. And then since again uh, we don't have SH SSH tool to be downloaded the putty. So we do need to connect to the uh, management terminal to do the process. Alright, so in this point, just need to hit connect. Then it will still show you again to enter the BNC password. But since we don't have yet BNC password, so we need to modify the BNC password. So we just need to hit cancel first. Then modify BNC password for it to create a new one, whichever whichever will be uh, the password that you want. So mine I will be using one two three four five six, and just to re-enter it here in the second tab, one two three four five six, and hit OK. All right. And since we're going to be doing the, the um, same step, let's go back to the step-by-step -step procedure. So the first procedure is actually is showing as the Elastic Compute tab server and the server load balancer tab. Okay. All right. So in this page, so click manage to go to the instance details page and view more information. And once you hit that, you will be routed in this page. And it will ask you to start Apache server but since, as I mentioned earlier, since uh, the environment that I'm, I'm using right now doesn't have an SSH tool put it to be downloaded, so I will be using the default remote connectivity provided by ECS. All right, so let me just hit modify, then put in one, two, three, four, five, six my password and re-enter it again and hit OK that you can see there's a prompt that has already been modified so you can be able now to connect to the management terminal by hitting by hitting connect to management terminal and there will be a pop-up again uh, for you to enter the BNC password that we just created so the password that I just created is one two three four five six then hit OK or just hit Enter. Alright, so in this page, it's asking for us to log on to the ECS console or... So the connection is successfully in logged into the account. So the default username and password of the ECS instance it will be a root for the username, so let's just go ahead and type it in. Root, then enter. And it ask, asking for a password, which will be NKYHD in capital letter 890 dot dot dot. So N, small N, small K, okay. G, 890 dot dot, enter. So let's try again to log in. Root. In the password, small n, small k, yhd, 890, double dot, then hit enter. There you go. I was able to log in. 
All right. Again, so if you're using Linux or Mac OS, you can open the client application on your local computer and run the following command to log on to the ECS instance with the default account. It will be ssh root at of in parentheses elastic IP address of the instance close parentheses and the default username and password of the ECS instance will be root for the username and small n small k capital Y capital H capital G number eight nine zero dot dot for the password so use the elastic IP address of the ECS instance to which you want to log on and when prompted to enter the password the default will not display the input only need to enter a complete password on it and if you need to see the detailed login method you can open the, the login link for the further viewing like this once you hit it see it will give you instruction as well on how to download booty or on how to connect to the terminal using ECS instance all right and we do need to run the following command to start the installation of the Apache so please notice the space between the commands so the first command that we need to put in is apt dash get space update you can just copy it then you can hit the input command so you can easily paste it here and hit ok so it will be easy to type in hit enter wait until it loads there you go and then put in the second command which will be apt dash get space install space apache2 space dash y so put that in so hit input command paste it here hit ok and hit enter Wait until it loads. Then after you put in the second command, and after the installation is completed, we can now run the following command to view the Apache running status. And you can just press Q or small letter Q or the Q to exit. But since we just need to check the status first, so we do need to put in the another command server service space patch it to space status. So just click input command, then paste and hit OK. Then enter. All right, so as you can notice, it's already active and up and running. And then the preceding figures shows that Apache service is in running state and the two ECS instances are used in the experiment and each is deployed with the Apache server to know which ECS instance the traffic came from. The static web page of the Apache server on the two ECS instances must be differentiated. Run the following command on the on one of the ECS instance and no, please notice the space between the commands so the last command that we do need to put in will be the command that has a hello word and since this will be uh, the second instance that we are doing we do need to change this ECS-1 to ECS-2 hit OK then hit enter all right so you can check it if you paste uh, the ip address on the new tab you will see the hello word that has um wording ecs dash two and also you can be able to check 
the hello world that has ECS-1 in here. All right. All right, so let's go back to the ECS tab or management console and check the, uh, the second ECS that we just uh, installed Apache here yeah, server. So hit running to state and check the second IP address of the second ECS that has already an Apache server or we already installed Apache server in the second ECS. So open a new tab, place it here, hit OK. See? It is already in Hello World ECS2. And if you're going to check the other one, just to make sure that it was not being doubled, Copy the IP address and paste the IP address here. Hit OK and there you go. Hello world. This is ECS dash one. So let's go back to the next step. So as shown in the preceding figure, the modified content is displayed on the web page. We can determine that the text displayed on the page is the data returned by ECS1. You can configure another ECS instance by the following the same or you can configure another ECS instance by following the same uh, preceding steps except for the slightly changing the text uh, for the display as follows. So access the IP address on the ECS2 instance in your browser. The result the results shown in the following figure are displayed. Now the Apache server has been deployed or has been deployed rather on the two ECS instances res respectively and web services has been started. In the browser, you can enter the IP address of an ECS instance to access its web page and text returned by two Apache server is different. So therefore, you can know on which ECS instance the Apache server you access is deployed. So view the server load balancer instance. So the system has created a server load balancer instance by default, and you can view the server load balancer instance in the console. So let's go back to the console. So now, we will need to go to the server load balancer, which is here. Just hit it or click the uh, tab. And this pop up notification, all you have to do is just to hit the box of that you are acknowledging and accept the terms and condition and hit confirm. All right, so we do need also to click manage in the server load balancer console. So the IP address in the preceding figure is assigned to the server load balancer instance, which is also the IP address that you access, which is this one. And when you access the server load balancer instance, it intelligently dispatches the request to one of the backend servers to avoid overload of another server. In this example, if you access the IP address, your request is forwarded to one of the two ECS instances. If one instance crashes, another instance can continue running to ensure you can access the address as usual. So the whole process is transparent. So next, we will be adding backend server, namely ECS instances for the server load balancer instance. 
So configure the server load balancer instance. So choose a server. And for you to see the server, you just need to hit this link. Go back. Hit this link. Go back to Elastic Compute Service Load Server. Last. So we do need to go back to the ECS console by hitting the running to state. And for the first ECS, you hit this one or this link. All right, so for you to go to the um, backend server, just need to click the server load balancer console and go to backend servers. And it will prompt you in this page that doesn't have a servers that, that was been already added. So we do need to add the servers that was not being added yet. So go to the servers not being added and put a check on the box then add in a batch and then hit confirm there you go it's already been added so the ways for the both ECS instances are set to 100 and after the instances are added they are displayed in the list of added servers here and we do need to add now a listener and add a listener so that the server load balancer instance can listen to the ECS instances for intelligent request scheduling so we need to click listeners tab here on the left corner and create a listener or add listener add. and in the dialog box that appears choose HTTP and put in 80 on the both blank tab on the right then hit next The next step is the default settings uh, for the health check configuration items and click confirm. So we need to put in forward slash here and hit confirm. So let's wait up until the listener is successfully configured. And no, it's already uh, successfully configured and hit confirm. So after the preceding configuration, the listener starts running, as you can see here. And run the test. After the preceding step, a server load balancer instance has been created, and two ECS instances are added to the backend server pool, and all components run properly after correct configurations. Follow the steps to test the effect of the server load balancer, and find the public IP address of the server load balancer instance and click the instance details tab on the left. Open your browser and you can enter the public IP address on the server load balancer instance. So let's copy this one and paste it here. 
There you go. So the response are from the Apache servers on the ECS1 instance. Refresh the page of responses from the Apache server on the ECS2 instance are returned. So different requests uh, from the same page are scheduled to different backend servers by the server load balancer instance. In this way, the server load balance or the load is balanced due to the load balancing width weighted round robin. And both ECS instances have a width of 100. So each visit is equally serviced by the different server. So now let's go need to set the different weights. And since uh, both of the two ECS instances were previously set to width of 100, so the request is evenly distributed across two instances and accessing the page twice, once by ECS-1 and once by ECS-2 return, you can distribute requests by width to two ECS instances by setting different weight. So let's go to To the backend server, then put a check on all of the uh, box, and click the uh, change weight tab, and set different width, and as per instruction, we do need to put in in the first empty uh, tab. 100 and then the second one will be 50 then hit confirm so we already modified the weights of both to 150 and refreshing the browser page reveals a symptom every three refreshes page there are two responses from ECS1 and one from ECS2 There you go. So to experience this effect of the server load balancer more deeply, you can shut down one of ECS instance, then the same response is returned if you access the IP address of this ECS instance multiple times. So reminder, before you leave this lab, remember to log out your Alibaba RAM account. And before you click the stop button of your lab, otherwise you'll encounter some issue when opening a new lab session in the same browser. All right, so uh, for the experiment summary, in this experiment, we learned how to use server load balancer to set up a server load balancer. First, create two ECS instances on the Alibaba Cloud platform and deploy the Apache server on the two instances respectively. Modify the content of the homepage of each Apache server to differentiate the Apache servers on the two instances. And create a server load balancer instance and add two ECS instances to the backend server pool. And set listener parameters to complete server load balancer configurations. And lastly, server load balancer intelligent distribute requests to different ECS instances to balance the load. So that's all for today. Again, my name is Jay and thank you so much for listening.